I love cruising, but there are some cruise ports of call where you're going to find some of the worst tourist traps. In fact, some of them might have you wishing you had stayed on the cruise ship. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you've been on a cruise before or maybe you're planning to go on a cruise, then you probably know that there are a lot of cruise ports of call and even sometimes experiences on the cruise ship that are a little bit of a tourist trap. Now, according to Wikipedia, a tourist trap is an establishment or group of establishments that has been created or repurposed with the aim of attracting tourists and their money. And let's face it, that is probably everywhere and that definition is very broad. But I did really want this video to be helpful. So I asked in the Life While Cruise Facebook community, what are some of the biggest and some of the worst tourist traps that you've ever experienced on a cruise or in a cruise port of call, I got some amazing answers and responses that I will share with you in this video. Now, most of these are in the Caribbean, but I did have a couple that are outside of the Caribbean, including one that might surprise you. And although these are generally not in any particular order, I did say what many people described as the worst for last. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, Costa Maya, Mexico. Now I have to say when it does come to the definition of a tourist trap, perhaps Costa Maya does fit the bill. There's basically a big free pool in the middle of the Costa Maya cruise port with a lot of vendors, a lot of shops, all around they're really trying to attract tourists to spend their money which i guess is pretty normal but a lot of people say that they just don't love going to costa maya now i was recently in costa maya now the excursion we did was to the mayan ruins about 45 minutes away i do recommend it however if you do stay at the cruise port of call it really is kind of a very man-made area and it will feel very much like a tourist trap Number two, Ensenada, Mexico, and in particular, La Bufadaro, which is a tourist attraction. Now, I have never been there before, but several people commented on how this is really a major tourist trap. Now, when I did Google this, the words La Bufadaro tourist trap did actually come up in the search and many of the reviews did mention tourist trap. Now, just to let you know what this is basically is near the port of Ensenada, a cruise excursion that is very popular is La Bufadaro, which is basically a famous blowhole, which is near the cruise port of Ensenada. And while a lot of people say that it is actually pretty spectacular, you do have to walk through throngs of vendors on your way in and on your way out. And a lot of people say that that is less than pleasant. Number three, speaking of Ensenada, Mexico, animal photo opportunities. And in particular, what I'm talking about is wild animal photo opportunities. Now these are happening in Ensenada, Mexico, but they're happening elsewhere as well. And I will talk about that in just a minute. But in Ensenada, it seems like in some of the different shops, there are these sort of opportunities to take photos with baby lions, baby tigers, and this is something that even apparently cruise lines more recently have been sending letters to the guests on the cruise ship, letting them know that this is not a very good idea for the animals, for themselves, and basically saying this is not something that they should support or encourage. And just to let you know, these are usually about five to $20, but these animals are likely not very well treated and it probably is not the best idea. Now, not only is this happening in Ensenada, Mexico, but in different places, especially in the Caribbean, you might even see monkeys, for instance, where there are photo opportunities to take pictures with the monkeys. In particular, I've seen this in St. Kitts. I know a lot of people have. It's sometimes in Barbados as well. And while these monkeys might be cute, a lot of people said that they just suddenly have a monkey on their shoulder and they're told that they are going to have to pay for this photo, even though they didn't agree to it. Now, by the way, if you're thinking that sounds a little bit like a tourist scam, I do have a video all about tourist scams and I will leave that video at the end of this one. Number four, Grand Cayman. Now, Grand Cayman is a really beautiful place, but some of the places in particular in Grand Cayman that people said are a tourist trap are, well, two things. One of them is the town of hell 
in Grand Cayman. And in fairness, every time I've seen that excursion advertised, they don't really say that it is more than that. It's sort of this black volcanic rock. It really isn't a very large area and you can actually send a postcard home. If I'm not mistaken, you were able to do that in the past, but from the town of hell. And that's basically the idea of it. Now, besides that, the other place in Grand Cayman that people said really is a tourist trap. They regretted going there and I have never been there by the way, but it is the turtle farm. Now, if you've been to the turtle farm in Grand Cayman and you had an experience either good or bad, please do let us know in the comments below. But a lot of people said this turtle farm had basically two cement pools filled with turtles and it really felt like a tourist trap. Number five, moving away from the Caribbean to somewhere that you may go on a Mediterranean cruise. This is Turkey. Now in Turkey, a lot of people who've been to Turkey know what I'm going to say already. It can be in Kusadasi, it can be in Istanbul, but basically it's any of the rug making demonstrations or rug factories. This demonstration basically turns into very pushy sales tactics and you're pretty much stuck in that area watching somebody make these rugs, telling you about these rugs, which could actually be interesting, but a lot of people say they felt very much trapped and forced to buy a rug just to get out and to be on their way. Number six takes us back onto the cruise ship to the cruise ship spa. Now I do think that some cruise lines are getting a little bit better with this, but a lot of people say going to the spa is just one big cruise tourist trap. They love the massages and the other treatments, but they do not like the pushy sales tactic for creams, lotions, and follow-up sessions. Now beyond the spa, there are some other potential tourist traps to be aware of on a cruise ship. And some of them include those health seminars. Now, of course, those can definitely be interesting. And if this is something you really wanna learn about, definitely go ahead, but be prepared that they still are probably going to try to sell you something. So it might be some orthotics that you may end up purchasing at the end. I've heard they're actually a pretty good quality, but some people say they did end up spending a couple of hundred dollars, even though they didn't plan to. The market in Royal Caribbean's private island, Labadee. Now Labadee itself is absolutely beautiful. It's in Haiti. The landscape is just gorgeous. The beaches are very pretty. But the market itself, while the vendors can be very aggressive and something just to watch out for is, especially if they know your name, perhaps they'll say, what's your name? And you say, Frank, they may start carving your name on a knife or a sword or some other wood product. And of course, at that point, you do feel obligated to buy it. So you do really wanna be aware of that market in Labadee. Number eight, now this one might surprise you, but it is good to know if you're planning on doing any Canada, New England cruises, in the future, it is in my home country. It is St. John, New Brunswick. Not all of St. John, New Brunswick, of course, but it is the Reversing Falls. What some people had to say about the Reversing Falls, which by the way is a tidal river, but basically what some people said is it's kind of unremarkable. They pretty much just expected more. Now, in my opinion, if the Reversing Falls are part of an excursion, part of a tour, then it is still worth going, but I probably wouldn't do only that while I was in St. John. However, what you might want to do is head over to Hopewell Rocks. Now, Hopewell Rocks is a little bit of a ways away from the cruise terminal in St. John, but it is absolutely worth it. Now, by the way, if you've ever been to the Bay of Fundy and done an excursion there or been to the Hopewell Rocks, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought. Now I have two more and this includes what a lot of people say is the worst tourist trap, the one that they will stay on the cruise ship for. But then I do have one bonus after that a lot of people have either love or hate for. So we have Dunn's River Falls in Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Now this is a very popular cruise ship excursion. It really is quite a wonder of nature. It's definitely something that a lot of people do but the tourist trap part is when you do finish climbing Dunn's River Falls, you have to walk through a throng of vendors. And I have to say, we were there less than a year ago and it was some of the most aggressive vendors that we've ever experienced. A lot of people said that they are insulting. We definitely experienced that as well. Now that being said, I didn't feel like it was ever something that was dangerous. If we just walked and said, no, thank you quite firmly, we really didn't have any problem, but that was definitely a tourist trap. I can attest. Number 10, Nassau Bahamas. Now, not only did many cruise passengers say that Nassau is a tourist trap or certain areas of Nassau being a tourist trap 
in particular the straw market or the downtown area but a lot of people said they'd prefer to stay on the cruise ship than visit Nassau. Now there are definitely some enjoyable things to do in Nassau including Atlantis including Blue Lagoon and going to Margaritaville. We did that our last time in Nassau but that is definitely an area where the vendors can be aggressive and you can have that similar market experience to Labatty. Okay now for the bonus Cozumel. Now Cozumel is the cruise port of call that many people would agree is definitely a tourist trap but it's a tourist trap that many cruise passengers also love. There are definitely tons of souvenir shops where you can buy vanilla, you can buy t-shirts, you can buy alcohol, you can buy jewelry. A lot of people say watch out for the jewelry because the stones and even the silver and the gold might not be genuine, but overall the merchants and vendors are not overly aggressive and most people just have a really good time in Cosmo. Now personally, it is one of my favorite ports on Caribbean cruises just because I do always have a good time, but I'd love to know what you think. Now I am gonna leave that video about tourist scams right after this. If you haven't seen it, you may want to watch that, but I'd love to hear from you. What are the tourist traps that you've experienced either on a cruise or in a cruise port of call? please let me know down in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.